really like about day dropping for swords is the simplicity of it all. At the end of the day, you need one appropriate outfit, handful of baits, certainly a deep drop weight, and an assortment of terminal gear, and you're in business. Start now with our hoagie lure, which is double hook rig, using 250 pound test with a skirt to enable it to keep it straight in the water as it's flowing. Depending on your preference, five to seven feet a liter of 250. Crimp to about a 600 pound swivel. You can probably use a three, 400 pound swivel. That'll be just as good. And then you roughly got a top shot of 250 pound test that is about 160 feet long. And then up the leader, I usually go around 45 to 50 feet with a, you know, you can use two or three lights depending on your preference. And like I said, the first one's about 45, 50 feet. Now I usually do an arm length and then you little breakaway rubber band to get the, the cheapest ones you can find. You take one loop, wrap it around as tight as you can get it. And you take the first loop and go back inside the other loop. Very simple, this goes over top of the whole light and it sits there. Now, when you want to wind your fish up, these cheap rubber bands enables you to wind through it and actually break these lights off so they slide down to the swivel to where you're gonna be about to hopefully gaff or harpoon your fish. And then from there, once you get your lights set up, we're gonna go with the current, which in this case will be going to the north, letting out about five to 600 revolutions a line, stopping it every half a second so everything catches up so nothing gets tangled. Once you get to that point, you're gonna to come to a little mark, which I'll show you right here real quick. This is where you clip on your lead, a long line clip. So when a fish comes up and you see the lead, it's easy to unclip, get it out of the way, and then you can continue fighting them on the wind on leader. Okay, right now we're heading south. I'm gonna get to ahead of the spot, which is there's a pinnacle and some canyons in this area. And with it being 3.5 knots of current, I'm gonna get up ahead of it and give us some time to get set up onto the bottom with our, our rig. Once we get the rig down, slowly drive against the current, trying to keep at 1.4 to 1.6 knots, so it allows the bait to move really well and cover ground at a slow pace. So what we've been doing today is, you know, we get the bait out, we're gonna let out the uh, wind on part of the leader. So now that we've hit bottom, I'm gonna bring it up to three, and I'm gonna bring it up about 100 feet. So what Corey's taught me is you wanna make um, you know, a series of checks. And uh, so what I'm gonna do is let this back down to the bottom. 
and then reset the bait so the sinker is about 100 feet off the bottom. So I'm letting it back down. So I've hit bottom, I'm re-engaging. I'm gonna bring it back up about 100 feet. So now I'm reset. Now that's gonna do three things. One, it's gonna make sure that you know, the bait is in fact in the zone. With all this movement, with current and wind, you know, you get different scopes in the line and that'll impact where the bait is. So by checking this, you know you're at the, you know, the desired depth. Number two, it's gonna give the bait action. We're using a soft bait today. And with the natural undulations of the bait, having that up and down motion is gonna give it fantastic action. And what that'll often do is entice hits. And then lastly, why I especially like it is it keeps you very engaged with the rod. And some of these hits, it's very, very subtle. So if you're engaged with the rod, bringing it up, taking it down, uh, not only are you giving it action, not only do you know you're in the right depth, but you're in tune with the rod and you can see even just the subtlest of hits. So when you get a hit, keep dropping for swords, what Corey recommends is bringing the, the weight up another 10 feet before dropping it back down to the bottom. And conversely, if it's a more pronounced hit, a significant bump of the tip, he'll immediately drop it to the bottom and then repoint the sinker back to that 100 foot mark. Now what's happening when that sinker goes down, the bait's gonna follow it and have a very natural undulation in the water and that'll often help tease the swordfish in the spike. Yep, yep, that's bite, that's bite, that's bite. Redrop it. Once you hit bottom, Mike, just come up to your 120 and then leave it sit for a minute. I think you're on bottom. Yeah, you're on bottom for sure. Keep coming up, keep coming up, keep coming up. Just keep coming up for a little bit there, Mike. The rod keeps going slack every time you uh, wind it up. That's what I'm wondering. You might be on swimming up with it or something. Okay, there we go. That's, that's what I want to see. That's just above three, right, Mike? Yep. Okay. Stalling out pretty good. We're hooked up. So we've hooked up uh, with a sword, um, teased it up, and here he is. We're bringing him in. I just eased the drag off just a little bit. We don't want to pull the hook. We're on auto reel. And uh, so I, you know, we're reeling in the fish on, in LP terms, just a little bit past three. It's really started stalling out. So I backed off the uh, drag pressure just a little bit. I put it in auto mode, which is the two red buttons. And um, we're trying to gain some line as we can go because we don't know what size fish it is yet. So we try to gain as much as we can because once they hit the light, they're very light sensitive. They're going to fight a little harder towards the top. So big fish I've seen swim right to the top. You think you have a small one and all of a sudden it's that 600 pound you're looking for. Take a little drag. Yeah. So we dropped it down to the bottom. We brought it up 120 revolutions, which is about 96 feet. We had a hit, we missed it, so we dropped it back down to the bottom, brought it back up. What that's gonna do is give that big soft bait plenty of action. And uh, he hit it again, and we repeated it. So we danced with that fish for a few minutes. Obviously now we're hooked up, sort of a funny hit. He grabbed it and took it up, so we had a little bit of slack. These hits are very subtle. And uh, I don't know, it seems to be a legitimate fish here. Getting pretty close to end game here. Got a fish on, so let's work on step three. Step three is get the lead off and he stays on. Then step four is catch him. down here in Florida, day dropping for these swords. 
We literally designed this particular lure to your specs. We've been shipping them to you. It's just amazing to see it work in 12 minutes. It, it, was, uh, it was fantastic. So it really doesn't take much imagination to understand how much action these baits have in the water. Now you'll see this bait is tandem rigged. Uh, now a lot of anglers don't like a tandem hook for sword fishing, but in this case I'm a huge fan because the second hook is gonna help keel the bait. So it'll have a real you know, serpentine undulation in the water. And the, uh, the skirt sort of helps keep the bait centered and tracking nicely through the water. And lastly, what's super cool about these baits is they have UV pigmentation. So what happens is UV rays, even you know, in 1,700 feet of water, will refract off the bait and give it some added attraction. And lastly, we put uh, purple glitter in here to help you know, really amplify the UV light refraction. So, you know, this bait is just supernatural, very visible, and very easy to fish with. And um, so far, so good. It's working.